Vincent, I would like to thank you for accepting to this interview for Coast to Coast across Canada. We want uh, fellow Canadian dermatologists to know what's going on uh, with uh, the University of Toronto, which you are chief of, and um, I think since uh, 2017, and you have a, a fascinating world background. You're, you truly are a man of the world coming from Geneva, you spent time at the Salk Institute in San Diego. Um, also, you were in Cardiff, Wales, and uh, now in Toronto. So I'd like to, uh, you to share with us how you ended up in, in dermatology also. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. And thank you for the CDA, you know, to provide us this with this opportunity to discuss about Toronto and, and also on a personal level, you know, to give me a chance to tell you some of my stories. Um, so I never aim to be a dermatologist and perhaps it's something that I share with half of the CDA, who knows, you know, <laughs> we, all, we, we had ideas when we start medical school. I, I was very interested in infectious disease and um, I started really, and you mentioned the Salk Institute. Um, Salk of course is the polio vaccine, right? And there was an institute in the US that they made uh, 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 thanks to because of Jonas Salk uh, through charitable funding and after medical school I graduated and then I started uh, embarking in research because I was told in Geneva that if you didn't do research you could never become an infectious disease specialist. So I, I went to the Salk, I did a um, postdoctoral research there, went back to Geneva and then um, talk to a lot of people and they said oh you shouldn't do id you should do something else where there's more work after maybe also work in the community so i didn't even destine myself initially to become an academic dermatologist and um by accident really i, I um, met professor jean hilaire sora who maybe some of you remember or know he mm -hmm. was a very well known you know uh, french dermatologist who was the chairman in geneva and was the author of the uh, Bologna of uh, mm -hmm. France, you know, which is the uh, um, the French textbook of dermatology, and um, and he said, well, you know, we we look some we would like someone who does um, infectious disease work, but in dermatology, there are a lot of skin infections. There's sexually transmitted Indeed. infections. There's uh, you know, the skin is the place where a lot of things happen, mucosal transmission of viruses such as HIV. Mm -hmm. so you'd be you'd be welcome with us and. Um, um, he offered a very attractive uh, uh, training program for me where I could combine, you know, clinical work and research as a resident. And so that's how I landed in dermatology through a slightly, you know, sort of ser ser serendipitous way, I could say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. What a chance to uh, have worked with Professor uh, Sora. That would be quite an opportunity. Yeah, I, stayed, uh, I, I worked 13 years with him, so we, we had plenty of time to, to uh, exchange uh, scientifically and clinically, and he was a fantastic clinical instructor, so I learned a lot from him clinically as well. And then what took you to Wales and then uh, Canada? Yeah, so, you know, um, one of the, um, I would say, Switzerland is a very high quality research environment. You know, it's very high tech. Uh, you probably all the stereotypes are somewhat true when it comes to Switzerland, unfortunately, or fortunately. And, and one of them is the tech, you know, is very strong there. Uh, but of course, one of the issues is the country is relatively small. And so after, you know, 15 years of being in the field, I was looking for something new, you know, and um, mm -hmm. um, I was at the time the president of the European Society for Dermatological Research, the ESDR, which is the equivalent of the SID, but on the European side. And um, my British colleagues, some of the very senior people in the field in the UK and folks like Chris Griffiths and Jonathan Barker and so on said, you know, Vincent, if you're interested to come work in the UK, I think we might have the right thing for you. And um, I thought it was a bit of a joke, you know, it was an, an evening at one of these conferences and uh -huh. uh, we had a few drinks together and so I thought, okay, this is just talk and nothing will come out of it, but in fact I was uh, sort of uh, quite aggressively in fact had hunted by, uh, by, um, by the UK and um, uh, they offered a very strong package, they offered me a chairman position and as far as I know it was perhaps I was the first uh, non-British uh, 
chairman of dermatology in Britain. So, wow. and he was in Cardiff in Wales. And so we, you know, spent several years trying to um, develop not just the clinical research, but also some of the basic science in dermatology. And I think um, when I left, you know, John Ingram is now, I think, the leader there. And I, I believe he's a very recognizable name. He's the editor in chief of the British Journal of Dermatology, and he was my, my resident. So I think. You know, the seven years I spent there were, were a great time. And, um, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I think because we had success there, or at least what I would call success, um, I think, um, you know, my name sort of circulated and uh, Toronto got an interest to recruit someone internationally, I believe. And so, um, you know, I was invited to visit Toronto and um, as you know, I have a French accent and a French name, so I thought Canada might be a good place, you know, where my <laughs> British experience or my experience in the US would be valuable, but also my sort of uh, uh, French language background from Switzerland would also make sense, and not just for me, but for my family, you know, my children sure. and my wife, and and so um, we visited Toronto, and there I am. You know, I've been uh, right. for four and a half years in Toronto, and it's been an excellent time. I mean, despite the, I mean, except for the pandemic, of course, but that's not uh -huh. uh, specific to us. And uh, tell me some of the strengths and weaknesses of your program at, at U of T. Yeah, so I think um, that's a great question. You know, the, the strengths, I think, is the size, right? If you want to learn something, we have it. Yeah. Like, yeah. We have, uh, there's no, you know, there's no other way to say we have, I think, the largest number of full-time faculty or part-time faculty with, uh, I think, around 60 people on faculty from full professor to lecturer. So there's place for everyone, whether it's for research or teaching or even quality improvement, uh, innovation, equality, diversity work, you know, so many things we're working on and this space for everyone who wants to contribute there. Um, we have uh, 35 to 40 residents on a, on a given year, you know, uh, and about 15 fellowship positions. Wow. Active. So it's a really, you know, large program and it is quite multidisciplinary with strong linguistic kids, you know, with an anapop. So there's this pediatric mm -hmm. component is strong. Uh, yeah. We have good collaborations with oncology and are strengthening them both in Sunnybrook as well at the uh, Princess Margaret Hospital. Uh, and, you know, uh, almost every year we have a new initiative or a new. Uh, so the last one that was very successful is we created a chair um, in equality uh, and diversity. So basically for uh, ethnodermatology, you know, and this was uh, a three million dollar investment into our program from uh, a partnership between UOT and AbV. And so this is really, I think, a, a huge, you know, a, a success for, for this year. And uh, we prepared it last year. Um, so I think lots of strengths, you know, and, um, you know, lots of very, very attractive things. We probably one of the largest programs in North America, maybe the largest. Yes, I would think so. Yeah, maybe the largest even. Uh -huh. um, and, uh, you know, unlike other cities, there's only University of Toronto. So all the affiliated hospitals are with us. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm division head in one of the hospitals, which is also the Women College, which is the largest, I would say, uh, outpatient based dermatology, uh, you know, in the city. So there's this strong link with, uh, and we have links with all the other hospitals, you know, um, the General Hospital, the Western, where Dr. Rosen is, uh, Sunnybrook, where Pearl Lansang now is, is running the, 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 the hospital there and all the other ones, you know. So that's really mm -hmm. the strengths. Um, the weakness, um, it's hard to say. I think the, one of the weaknesses is like all big institutions, things tend to be very methodical and perhaps some people mm -hmm. would say slow, you know? So that's, uh, that's, yeah. uh, that's one of the things we work with. Um, the second one, and this is maybe more something because of my background and maybe thinking about the Canadian landscape is I'd like to build more uh, basic, science, you know, uh, applied to, to skin, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in Toronto. And I think we have uh, some strengths in that area, but we have a, a lot of strengths in clinical research, really, uh, with outstanding folks like uh, Anwen Chan or Aaron Drucker and several others. But, mm -hmm. um, but I think in basic science, uh, 
I do some of it, but as a chair, it's difficult. You know, uh, we we have so many commitments. So I'd like to mm -hmm. see more uh, younger, you know, individuals maybe committed to basic science who can uh, either work with us or grow, the, you know, build their own lab down the line, or and and really. Um, have a strong component of, of uh, basic science and translational research. I think um, mm -hmm. perhaps, perhaps it's a weakness, you know, overall in Canada. I know there are some groups, you know, in Edmonton or uh, BC or uh, McGill and so on. But overall, compared to the size of the country, and uh, I think we could do a lot more in this area. Right. And I think it came from medical school because back when I did medical school, there wasn't an option to sort of combine with the PhD and it, it's a European approach to do so. And I, I think it's coming more and more. They're encouraging young people to, to combine uh, with the uh, scientific background. Yeah. I think it's at all levels. I think you're right. I think it's, um, you know, at all the steps, the Canada does not have a lot of support available for basic science in dermatology. Uh, mm -hmm. And that you're right, it's during training, it's after training, it's at the CIHR, it's at you know, multiple, multiple levels. And, uh, right. uh, and I think that's, um, uh, if we compare it to the US, for instance, there's a very, very robust you know, basic science program there. Um, and uh, uh, I think it's been, you know, all these steps have been invested into by, you know, whether it's university level with CHR, so the NIH in the US, obviously, but the CHR type support and, you know, various schemes to keep people on track. Basic science is uh, challenging. We all know that, you know, you don't publish mm -hmm. quickly as if you do systematic reviews or, you know, other more clinically oriented type of work and uh, the fruit can be a little bit take longer. So, uh, you need this extra support to to train people for the 10 years plus that are required, yeah. Right. And what would you say about um, uh, for young people that are just starting their practice? Do you have any pearls or that you could also give to the residents? Um, so starting a practice in the community or you mean uh, starting Both. practice in Both. an academic setting? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, follow your passion, try to stay on the medical track, you know, we need academic and medical oh, dermatologists yeah. and surgical dermatologists. Yeah. Um, we have backlash from funders, governments, ministers that too many uh, are doing too much cosmetic work. So I have nothing personally against cosmetic, but um, I think, you know, we really also need medical dermatology and, and surgical dermatology across the country. So please, uh, you know, focus on that if you can. I would echo that. <laughs> and uh, after that, well, what what else um, for the CDA? Have have you had any uh, involvement with them? And what do you think the CDA should should do to help Canadian dermatologists? No, I think the CDA and you know also the Canadian Derm Foundation are, are great, mm -hmm. you know, assets for research in our country. I think you're doing a tremendous job. I was very welcomed by the CDA when I arrived in Canada a few years ago, and uh, you know was invited to give some talks. Met a lot of people, and uh, of course with the pandemic, we you know it was a different time. But I think once we can meet again in person, it will be a good thing. And uh, uh, I think the CDA is doing an excellent job um, uh, and the CDF as well. And I, you know, the only thing is if we could grow the funding for the CDF, I think that would be uh, one of the areas that is so important, you know, for the future of dermatology in Canada. So that would say, mm -hmm. you know, if the CDA can support the Canadian Derm Foundation, uh, that's right. a very, very important aspect. And then of course, you know, I think the quality of the scientific program is very good in the CDA. I think you have very strong, you know, sort of uh, CPD activities. I've really enjoyed many of the lectures. So, yeah, not much mm -hmm. to say. I mean, it's just surveying the, the members, what their needs are, and uh, mm -hmm. both at uh, early career, mid career, and late career. And um, Right, right. Exactly. So, I think we've done a good job of supporting the residents through the COVID, and uh, there's more to do. And... Uh, we have our journal, the JCMS, also that can residents can publish in, and uh, 
You yeah. too? <laughs> yes, I do. I do. We publish yeah. regularly in the JCMS, and uh, I Great. think it's a, it's a very good journal as well. And so we, yeah, we definitely contribute. I can encourage everyone to work uh, with, and I'm, I'm actually an, have an editorial role in the journal. So I, I would encourage okay. people to participate and uh, support the JCMS. Great. Well, thank you for your time, and I wish you a great weekend, and uh, thanks for sharing with fellow Canadian dermatologists. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, okay. Thank you again for the invitation and to the CDA, and I hope to see you soon. Um, yes. In June. Bye-bye. In Quebec. À bientôt. In Quebec. À bientôt. Au revoir. <laughs>